This month, we look at two exciting upcoming models. We sit down with designer Sam to discuss his process working on the impressive Sentinels, and we visit Customer Corner to see your locos and layouts from the past month. I'm Mike, we're Hornby, and welcome to Signal Box. Built at Horage Works D3817 and to traffic on the 18th of March 1959. And after being allocated to Newport for just over 10 years, the locomotive spent its entire British railway service life in the south. It was based at Ashford and then Eastleigh, during which time it was renumbered as 08650. Foster Yeoman purchased the locomotive in August 1989, transferring it to operations on the Isle of Grain, where it continued operation into aggregate industries ownership. Now owned by Mendip Railway, 08650 has operated under private ownership longer than it did under that of British Railways. Having undergone numerous renumbers and serving multiple railway locations, this locomotive will bring that extra splash of history to your railway collection. Also built at Horridge Works, D3812 entered traffic on the 13th of February 1959. Allocated to Newport Pill and the locomotive was to remain in Wales, albeit allocated to different depots until the closure of Landor in December 2018. During this period, air brakes were fitted to D3812 in October 1971 and in March 1974, the locomotive was renumbered as 08645 under TOPS. On leaving Landor, 08645 was moved across to GWR's Long Rock Maintenance Depot on 13th of April 2019 at the public open day held to raise money for the Penley Lifeboat Station and RNLI. The locomotive was unveiled in a special livery and bearing the name St Perrin, after the patron saint of Cornwall. With such a huge background and duration of service, the St Perrin earns a well-deserved spot in any railway collection and scenery. We recently showed you a close-up look at our new six-wheel Sentinels. We managed to prize Sam, our Hornby designer, away from his desk and from an exciting 2023 project long enough to tell you about these exciting models. Take it away, Sam. Hello, my name is Sam and I am a designer in the Hornby development team. And today I'll be talking to you about our new 060 Sentinel. I designed the Sentinel went on a research trip to the East Somerset Railway to measure it. In fact, we measured PBA number 39, which is in our range this year. Uh, from, the, from those measurements and engineering drawings, built it up from scratch, completely new design, nothing used from the original four-wheel version, which was quite an exciting challenge to bring this new product to life in the modern Hornby way. For me, the Sentinel was a really fun project to do, especially because it was my first locomotive. I've worked on coaches and wagons in the past, uh, but this was designed starting in April 2020 at the start of the pandemic. So it was all designed from home, from working from home, which was an interesting and unique challenge because I didn't have the expertise of the other members of the team to lean on. Uh, so there was a lot of conversations over teams about what to do, what not to do. So to start with, um, the very first thing you do is put your wheels in, put your wheels in, with the right wheelbase and then put the gears in. Once you work, we know the speed and the scale speed, we can then choose the teeth of the gear, choose the motor and put that in position. So starting from the ground up and then building the chassis around those, but then making sure it fits with the body that has to go on top. So it's a bit of back and forth and it's a very fluid process. Uh, my favorite livery of this year's range is PBA number 39, because this is the one that we measured and got to see. And it was our first trip out after the first lockdown ended. So it was quite nice to finally get away again. And it was a really sunny day, that always helps. My favorite part of the design process is getting the first samples in. Uh, in with the case of this, the first running sample to see all the molded parts put together and then running around the track. But prior to that, we had 3D prints made to make sure that it ran properly. And then the first shot samples was to check all the details there. But the best part of this project, as it was my first loco to see a version of the product running around our test track and that was very exciting. The most challenging thing of this project, aside from working from home and having to 
to get all the assistance I needed from teams. The biggest challenge was making the locomotive run well at slow speeds, especially around points. With the wheelbase, uh, it's a bit tricky uh, because it's not long enough to go over all the dead spots, but it's also not short enough to avoid them completely. Um, so we did a lot of work to get that part of the design correct. And lots of samples back and forth between us and our manufacturers in China to get that right. So the six wheel Sentinel differs dramatically from the four wheel Sentinel, uh, both in terms of the design and the way it works. The original four wheel Sentinel had all of the componentry in the wheels built onto the chassis and then had the side plates stuck on the outside. But the design process of this, we wanted to get away from that. Um, we had the opportunity, it's completely fresh tooling to start from scratch. Um, because of that, we're able to separate the chassis from the body, which not only avoids the need for the split lines around the side plates, but also makes the fitting of the decoder a lot simpler. So on the original four wheel Sentinel to fit the decoder, you had to unhook these wires and lift the whole body off. And you can see in the cab area where the decoder fits, it's concealed with a, with a plastic block. On our new six wheel version, all of that stuff, because it's also bigger, we can get away with this. Um, the decoder sits underneath the engine, which leaves the cab area to be completely clear and open for fitting in uh, figures. On our visit to East Somerset, uh, I had the opportunity to drive the four wheel Sentinel Joan. Um, Colin, the, the guy who helped us, was really, really nice and very kind to let us do that. And that was a very, very cool experience. Even just go backwards and forwards along the track uh, and the smell of the diesel engine and the noise it made something I'm not going to forget anytime soon. So I'm really looking forward to seeing the Sentinel on people's layouts, in the yards, pushing, pulling coaches, shunting wagons. Uh, just nice to build up the atmosphere of any layout. For me, this designing the Sentinel was a very interesting experience because being my first loco, I knew nothing about the gearing, the motoring, and the way the electronics worked before starting this. So to go through the process uh, to see what had come before with the four wheel version and improve on the criticisms from, from when that originally launched, that was quite nice. And all the things I learned doing this has been brought through onto all the projects that I'm working on now, which will be coming out in the next couple of years. Finally, we visit Customer Corner to see your locos and layouts from the past month. For a chance to be featured in Customer Corner, share your layouts and locos online or send an email to marketing at hornby.com. Well, that's all we've got time for this month, I'm afraid. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Mike, you've been great, and I'll see you at the next stop.